if you are just running ads and you don't have an organic social content strategy, your ads are going to perform less. And you might not see it. You might not see it in terms of the metrics. You might be like, oh, well, I'm getting great cost per click or I'm getting you know, great cost per view. However, the qualitative things that you can't necessarily see until they're accumulating over time, those will definitely suffer. And the reasoning behind that is, frankly, you look like a ghost town. You are now listening to the Creative Juice Podcast brought to you by Indopreneur.io. What's up, Indies? Welcome back to the Creative Juice Podcast. I'm your host, Jack McCarthy. This is episode 221. With me, as always, is my co-host, Mr. Ed Isola. Ed, I am particularly excited to continue our chat about paid traffic and organic traffic and how they work together and the narrative that's being spun about how they're separate of each other for whatever reason in music marketing. How are you, sir? I am equally as excited. I've been thinking about it a lot since we talked last. And uh, I think it'll be cool because I think we got a really, really good outline last time of the fact that paid traffic is a great way to kind of take the first step and to build your fan base consistently day after day. And I think kind of alluding to something from last time, organic content and traffic has its own challenges and its own benefits. I think kind of maybe open up some bigger doors potentially. So I'm excited to get into it, man. Me too. Let's start right there. You mentioned challenges and benefits to organic as a leg of your strategy. We kind of touched on some of the challenges already, how like organic is unpredictable and it uh, forces you to be on kind of a content hamster wheel and being constantly creating content and scheduling it and posting it and doing, you know, hashtag research and stuff like that, even, you know, timing it, trying to quote unquote, hack the algorithm. But what are some of the challenges and the benefits that come to your mind, Ed? Yeah, I, I mean, so here's one thing I've never actually personally experienced or with any clients is organic growth via hashtags or organic growth via just consistent posting. I've, I've never experienced that, which is interesting. You know, we had a little bit of virality for the 502s, but that wasn't a result of some robust, consistent organic strategy. So I think maybe the first challenge in my mind with organic strategy is having misplaced expectations that if I just show up daily and I post one or two videos every day, eventually I'm going to have a huge fan base. That to me is an expectation that I hear a lot of people talk about when they get excited to say, I'm going to, I'm going to post, I'm going to make all these videos. I'm going to do all these things. And unless you have some real tangible end goal, that's like, I'm going to do this until I have 5,000 followers or something like that. You see it a little bit more on TikTok, but like Instagram and Twitter, that kind of stuff. Those, a lot of it tends to rely on, on a little bit of luck, I think. So I think maybe misplaced expectations. That's one huge issue. The other huge issue is the time commitment that comes into that. Even if you're going to post content two or three times a day, that's a lot of content creation. And I don't think people necessarily always think about the grind that content creation is because it's not easy and it's not always quick. And a lot of indies have other jobs or ways to pay their bills. So it's not like you're just waking up and making eight TikToks today. Like you're doing a full job and then doing that. And it becomes a lot of time. So to me, those are kind of the two main, not problems, but misconceptions around organic traffic that kind of, I think we addressed in the past episode with paid traffic kind of cuts those out. But th those are the problems I would say with organic traffic in my mind. That's a really good point. I wasn't thinking about the kind of misplaced expectations. That's a really good point. Like where we talked about paid traffic giving you a lot of at bats and consistency that you know generate results that you can measure. I think a lot of those misplaced expectations can be solved with paid traffic. So taking those expectations that you might have from organic content and picking them up and moving them over to your paid acquisition strategy, I think that that kind of solves that problem for you, which is nice. And that's kind of getting into what really the spirit of this episode, I think, is like how organic and paid efforts work together. But that's a really good point. There's definitely like, it's hard to set expectations and goals around growth when it comes to organic social because 
you're right. There's to some degree an element of luck that comes along with it. And the luck that comes with a lot of time and effort and real energy in creating content and, and putting it out there. Yeah. And, and I, and I think this kind of goes back to last week and, and where I want to kind of take this conversation, at least in my mind is like, as you're getting started, if you spend the time to get one piece of content dialed in and then you can run it via paid traffic, that ultimately is going to be maybe feel a little more frustrating up front if you're having things that aren't working, but it's going to save you time. It's going to get you results quicker. Organic traffic can be very discouraging if you go for two weeks and you spend three hours a day making content and then you start posting it and nothing's catching on. You're like, I just made 60 videos and none of them worked. Like that's very discouraging. That's a complaint that I hear often from artists is like, man, I've been grinding at this content thing, I, but I'm not really seeing it help. Like maybe I got some followers, but like I don't really feel like they're fans um, and I'm putting a lot of time in. Yeah. And the other thing too with organic is like, it's not always the case that in most places, not the case that you could just go say, hey, I saw this artist do this thing that I like and therefore I'm going to go ahead and replicate it on my page for my songs and it's going to work. Like it, it's not A to A, you know. A lot of times organic stuff won't even work or catch on unless you have some really, really creative original idea I've found that like, hey, here's the angle of why my thing is different. And that's hard in itself to come up with. So creating the organic strategy is hard, executing it's hard, and the results are kind of question mark. So then you might be saying if all that stuff like, what's the point? <laughs> right, What's the, what the heck is the point of organic traffic? And in my mind, organic traffic operates like this. You spend the time to find a great asset that works, at which point you start running that as paid traffic, at which point you have this paid traffic running daily, growing your ecosystem regardless of anything else. That's the end of phase one and the end of uh, part one episode, right? Part two is now that you're growing, you can make content, but it doesn't have to be daily. You can take time to create more fan finder videos or create different fan finder type videos from your existing ones for TikTok and all these different organic placements and you can start posting them. And, and it becomes more of a testing ground where if you have a clip that you feel very, very strongly about that's 10 seconds of your fan finder that you're running ads to that you think would be great on TikTok, there's nothing that says you can't post that video at 7 a.m. on Tuesday. And if it doesn't do well, delete it or hide it, post it again at 7 p.m. on Wednesday and start playing around. So organic content to me, one, I think of it a lot as the home run swing via TikTok or Instagram reels. But to me, it's like this place where you can start to test things until something catches on and you find what actually works for your fan base. I think that's the benefit there is, is that it allows you more testing and if something catches on, more immediate growth without leveraging your day-to-day -day progress. So just to clarify and to kind of like build that out a little bit further and expound upon it, you're saying that when you're when you've got your paid traffic component in place for your for your music marketing and you're using that to you know get more at bats to get your music and your videos in front of more people then taking the winning creative from those campaigns and using it organically in your TikTok post in your reels post on your socials and using that there in a variety of different ways is kind of like step one to growing organically and getting more engagement organically because you've got something that you've tested at some degree of scale. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think that growing organically is a result of paid traffic and then taking those, those paid assets or testing and finding the asset that has responded well and posting and creating more of those things. Like for me, for example, it it is, fan finder videos on TikTok. That works really, really well for us. And so we're gonna keep doing that. And every video doesn't get 2 million views on it. Some get 50,000 views, some get 10,000 views. But every every video gets a little engagement, gets a little bit more, more followers, gets a little few more likes, brings more people into our ecosystem. And so what, the way I'm thinking about it is like, through your paid traffic, you learn kind of what your fans like, like we talked about last episode, then you can start to create that content and post that on the organic feeds and essentially see what people respond to, make more stuff like that while also testing other ideas. 
but it becomes really powerful because you get to understand what's working for me organically. And at the same time, you aren't dependent on something just going viral to get views because you have this fan base that's being generated via paid traffic. So as you're posting, it's also serving organically to nurture those people. Um, and like we talked a few episodes back on TikTok specifically, it looks at if people watch the video all the way through. And so you get some fans that are in your ecosystem. They're watching your organic content. It starts to get distributed. It all kind of plays into each other. Um, I hope I hope that kind of thought process makes sense. No, it totally does. And I'm glad you mentioned the uh, the episode that we did on on TikTok a couple episodes back. I'll link to that in the show notes so that you guys can dig back in. We talked about what musicians should know about the TikTok algorithm. And like Ed mentioned, one of the big things is that watch time is a critical part of the TikTok algorithm and how it recommends videos to users. I think what you said makes total sense. Like you're taking not only the creatives that you're battle testing in your advertising campaigns, but you're also taking the style and the brand and really just the overall creative takeaways from your ads and using that to create more content organically. And that can speed up your content creation process by quite a bit for organic content because it allows you to not have to second guess, really, like you said, like you've locked into fan finder style performance videos as being a solid creative asset organically for you on TikTok. You learn that through advertising those. Yeah. And it, it, it really plays into each other. But I, th- I feel like the, the thing here is that I really want to stress is like organically, I, I don't think that it would operate the same for those reasons if organic traffic came first. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think if we did, if you did the whole organic strategy first, that would work the same way. What I think is interesting is that the paid traffic informs things that you should post organically. And then funny enough, once you kind of take that information and you're not just shooting in the dark, but you actually have a target you're aiming for with your organic content. Something inevitably feels like it will catch on in some capacity. And then you take that piece and then you slot that piece into the ads. And now it's this kind of self-fulfilling system where your paid traffic informed your organic content, which went viral, which is now being run to cold audiences on your paid traffic again, and kind of creates this cyclical loop because you got to you got to go about it in in that way as a system you can't cut corners a lot of people try to say i'm going to i'm going to go for a, a video that goes viral and let me see what happens it doesn't work and they're at a loss you kind of have to set up those building blocks and then go from there i love that i i think that that's such an interesting concept of like the flywheel of traffic right i think that that's a really really cool concept of like you're learning from your paid advertising. You're taking that to your organics, to your social strategy. You're seeing what takes on there. You're applying those videos and bringing them back into paid advertising. And that's creating this sort of flywheel or feedback loop of consistency and growth on both sides of the equation, paid and organic. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, that's really how we approach it at the agency all the time with a lot of our artists. In fact, I was just talking with one of our bands a couple weeks ago and we were talking about their TikTok ad strategy. And they have a lot of success with Facebook and Instagram ads, and they've been doing some TikTok content based on some of the ideas that we've seen and some of the creative concepts that we've seen work in their ad strategy. They've been taking those to TikTok. And the conversation that we've been having then is, okay, once you see one of those start to take off and go well, then we're going to run that on TikTok ads. And we're going to use that to get you considerably more attention. We're going to put gasoline on the organic fire, so to speak. So I think that speaks to exactly what you were talking about, Ed, that kind of flywheel. So I think that that's one massive benefit to organic for sure, that really your paid informs your organic strategy, your organic strategy informs and supports your paid strategy. The other thing that I wanted to talk about in how organic and paid work together is certainly your organic strategy works to keep you engaged with your existing fans. I think that that's really important and it's kind of like a simple baseline thing to understand about having a social presence, right? Like you're posting stuff that your existing fans will like. You're not necessarily relying on it for fan base growth, but it's letting people know like I'm still here. But I want to take that and go one extra step with it and say that if you are just running ads and you don't have an organic social content strategy, your ads are going to perform less. 
And you might not see it. You might not see it in terms of the metrics. You might be like, oh, well, I'm getting great cost per click or I'm getting you know, great cost per view. However, the qualitative things that you can't necessarily see until they're accumulating over time, those will definitely suffer. And the reasoning behind that is, frankly, you look like a ghost town, right? Like you look like nobody's there. People will go and explore and try to find your IG profile or look you up on Facebook or look at your TikTok and they'll see that nothing's really going on. There's massive gaps between your posts or maybe it's just empty altogether. You don't have a profile that's built out with content. And that carries with it a sense of like, oh, this is, you know, I just saw this random ad. It's illegitimate. It doesn't stick with a fan or a potential fan. They're not even a fan yet. And I think that's a really, really critical point that is a danger of just relying on paid traffic. Absolutely. Yep. You can't just rely on the paid traffic because I I think what Jack's kind of getting at is that as much as organic traffic, like we just talked about, serves as a way to take that home run swing to you know, maybe have a video go viral, it serves equally as much to support the paid traffic and nurture the people that are coming into your ecosystem. So I, I just kind of ran through my thought process from using organic traffic to inform what gets run in the ads. But at the same time, if you think about it as you're also running paid traffic every day, those people hopefully are coming to your social profiles and seeing what you're posting. So organic, organic posting has the role of taking the people who have come in via paid traffic and showing them more content and deepening your relationship with them there. So it's equally as important for that, like Jack just said, which is, which is a really good point because organic is not just growth. It's also continuation so that your paid traffic isn't just kind of floundering out, you know? So I think that's a really good point. And what's really interesting too about it is that, Organic traffic over time, like you said, helps improve your cost per ads because you kind of start to, over time, this is weird, your face becomes familiar to your fans. And I know a lot of people kind of like aren't into the idea of being a public figure that are independent musicians, but you do become a public figure by virtue of your face always being on people's feeds because you're spending money on ads for years at a time. Yeah, let's call you a public facing artist, you know? Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. You're yeah, you're a, a public facing artist and that makes everything better, but you have to go through the process of having paid and organic running because you don't become a public facing artist where your name or your band name or your face are recognizable, at least in a digital space, without both paid traffic and organic traffic. And if you don't become a public facing artist over time, like you said, your performance flatlines essentially. Whereas if you do become a public facing artist and you are having conversations and you are putting content out and you are running ads and you are building your ecosystem every day, things tend to go better for you in the long run. You you hit that critical mass like we were talking about, your ads become more effective, your organic content becomes more effective and it all kind of plays into each other. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, we talked about the idea of paid advertising for audience growth, giving you a lot of consistency in at bats. And I think what consistency in organic strategy does for you is it also gives you consistency in at bats, but in a different way, not necessarily for growth in terms of audience volume, but warmth in terms of uh, audience engagement and audience buy-in they start to believe in you and become associated with you and your tribe of fans, really. I think that that's a really important concept for creatives to consider is like your social strategy, your organic strategy is a big piece of the puzzle when it comes to making people realize that you're out there and you're doing stuff because at the end of the day, people want to be involved in things that are moving forward and that are happening. They want to have stake in something that is current and going on and not just something that is stagnant or, you know, released one song a year ago and I I, I saw an ad for it and then never heard from the person ever again. People want to believe in something that you're doing. And if you're not out there being active and being public, then there's a whole layer of 
audience warp that just never happens. It's like they come into your world through an ad and maybe they see that ad a few more times, but that's it. And I think that that's really, really important to consider because if you're looking to take people deeper than just a casual, you know, one time listen, you need to have that piece in place because down the line, if you're trying to get people out to shows or get someone to sign up for your email list or your text list or getting someone to buy from you for the very first time, if they don't have that buy-in as as a real fan that's invested into what who you are and what you're doing beyond just, you know, the, the touches that they've had or the clicks that they've made through ads that you've served to them, then you're going to have a really, really hard time. Yeah, it, it all it all ties in. So I, I think kind of like the underlining point of this is, you know, for episode one regarding the paid traffic, it was like, it gives you a step. It gives you a process to start generating fans. Organic traffic gives you a process to keep those fans and build relationships with them. And for all the reasons that Jack just outlined, that is super important because think about your favorite artists. They have some relationship with their fans, whether it's consistency of music or the way they interact. There's something there that people love them and follow them. And that's what organic traffic allows you to do, especially if you're not out there touring, it allows you to connect. I want to lay out here an interesting theory in my head that I think it could easily be misconstrued that what we're saying right now is like, oh, if you run ads and you're not doing anything organically or you're not doing as much as you should be organically, then those people that came through the ads are not going to become real fans as if those people coming through another channel would have. And that's not what we're getting at, or at least that's not what I'm getting at. I don't want to put words in Ed's mouth here, but where I'm going with this is I'm going to take examples from my own life. I've discovered artists through ads. I've discovered artists through viral content. I've discovered artists through regular content, organic content on on YouTube, on TikTok, on really any socials. I've kind of come across bands and, and artists and other things that I like through a variety of different channels. That's been my first touch point, right? As a As a new audience member, there have been an equal number of cases where I felt like I was brought into either a ghost town or that artist dipped off and my interest in them waned. There's an artist that I like that I first discovered them through their YouTube content, but then from there, they kind of like slowed down, kind of went ghost on socials and I kind of lost interest, to be honest. I dropped off and that same phenomenon could have happened whether I discovered them through an ad or through, you know, just like their previous consistency in their uh, in their organic strategy. So the touch point on the front end doesn't necessarily matter when it comes to what we're talking about on the keeping that new listener or that new batch of listeners, really, that hopefully that critical mass that's starting to be built up. The entry point for them doesn't matter as much when it comes to what you're doing on the social organic front. You have to have that piece in place. So I wanted to just kind of underline that point that like it has nothing to do with the quality of people that are seeing ads versus coming in from somewhere else. You know what I mean? I don't know. What do you think about that? Ed? Maybe you would disagree. No, I mean, I, I think what you're trying to say is like top of funnel awareness is all is essentially all the same. Like regardless of how people hear about you, if you intend for them to stick around, they need to have a next step or they need to have a next thing to kind of know, all right, hey, I like this video but what else do they have to offer? And what other content do they have to watch? So I agree with you that whether it's a viral video or a paid advertising or a friend told them to come check it out, organic content is that thing where when they come to your page and they watch the first video and they're like, yeah, I dig this, like what's next, right? It's better for them to have five videos that they immediately love because they find them versus they saw one and they hate your next four because they saw a music video And then they go to your page and it's you trying to do stand-up comedy, right? Like it just doesn't, it wouldn't track. And so that's something with organic too, is like make sure that the content that you're posting is somehow tied together. It needs to have some semblance of organization and cohesion because that's super important too. Like you want to go to the page, but you want to also know that they are posting content. And again, that's something that I've seen as, as a really, really great unintentional learning curve for myself not learning curve, but like something we did right that I didn't expect would be so important was that people go to our pages and there's 
rows and rows and rows of performance videos and they, they like them they like them all right they watch them all they comment on them and youtube instagram all this stuff it's like whoa here's this whole living breathing organism that i've now found and i want to be a part of it versus i liked one video and so i i think that's what you're kind of getting at is that as a landing base for people you want to have a lot to offer over time growing it instead of just piecemeal or, or one-off things 100 that's exactly what i was saying and yeah i was saying that like top of funnel doesn't necessarily vary but i want to be very clear that the medium doesn't make the quality of the fan vary right like you could get a ton of top of funnel exposure through organic or you could get a ton of top of funnel exposure through ads or a billboard <laughs> or a TV show. You could get a whole lot of top of funnel exposure through any of those mediums, but the quality of the new fan doesn't necessarily come from the medium or the source of that traffic. However, what it, where it does come from is the content that they were being served there. So like someone who watches an extremely in engaging video and they were served that as an ad, you know, kind of creating these like cultural moments. We've talked about that plenty on, on this show, how like the types of ads that we recommend running when trying to get new fans are viral-esque videos because they bind people to this sense of like, there's something happening here. This is a cultural moment for me. And I feel like I'm a part of something. And those are the types of pieces of content that if they were served to you in an ad, it creates a, a sense of a, a like a, a quality of a fan that comes in and then consumes everything else that you've got going on organically. Same thing could happen with viral organic content. If it's something that is super viral and it feels like it's a cultural moment, they'll come and dig into it. Versus like if someone just saw like, I don't know, a graphic ad or something like that, where, you know, maybe you're getting a lot of clicks on like a static or a slightly moving IG stories ad that's asking people to swipe up to listen. I don't know, spitballing here, but the level of quality of that fan would probably be totally different, uh, even though the medium is the same. But what, where I was getting at was exactly what you were saying. The medium doesn't necessarily affect the quality as much as the content does. And that quality regardless of where they're coming from, can wax and wane depending on what you're doing uh, organically from there. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good point, which I think just speaks to, you know, making sure you're making good organic content. It doesn't have to always be high-end professional videos, but you want to be making things that look good, sound good, are on brand vibe-wise. That's really important. I mean, this is kind of funny, but I, we posted a video recently for the 502s that was a... a announcement of a show in Chicago that was me eating a piece of deep dish pizza saying like, hey, you should come to this show. I saw that today. Yeah, yeah. So it's like we posted that, right? And that is a, that is a very 502s video where it's very funny. It's very goofy. There's kind of silly little animations on the screen. But if you came in and you watched that, it's high quality enough that you would be like, huh, okay. You know, and, and that's not a performance video. That's not something that's going to win people over but it's it does give them insight into my personality and the band's personality and that's super super important that you're posting things that have a meaning and are even just off of iphones good audio good video you know not some like blurry mumbly selfie video or so you know it, it all speaks to your brand and, and that's what i feel like you're getting at and i agree with you that it's got to be good and it's even the authentic stuff has to be presented well to create a good quality fan. Yeah. It's like your organic strategy and your organic content allows you to solidify the brand that someone, you know, initially discovers. It allows them to realize like, oh, this is a human or a group of humans if you're a band. <laughs> and then it allows you to, it allows you to remind people or really solidify with them like, oh, like I discovered this and I knew there was a reason for it. And look at all of this stuff that I dig. This is right up my alley. I think that's where organic strategy really allows you to shine and like flex your muscles. It allows you to, to pull people in just a little bit deeper, you know? Yeah, and consistent organic strategy, much like I said last episode, that being consistent with the paid advertising over months and years is really important. Same thing with organic consistent content. 
that you start off, it might feel like no one's watching, but people are, you just don't see it. And then two years down the line, you continue running your paid traffic. And now you have a wealth of backlogged content on your feeds and stuff. People go through that stuff. They explore it all over time. And so if you're starting today, make sure it's all presented well and looks and sounds good and and all that stuff is well thought out because people do pay attention to everything at some point. So you might be wondering now, like, uh, maybe your head is spinning a little bit after listening to us <laughs> talk about the difference between like paid traffic strategy and organic traffic strategy and where they overlap and where they work together. So like I mentioned in the last episode where we talked about one of the first things that we do when we work with an artist is we look to see how is their fan acquisition? How are they generating new listeners? How are new people coming into their world and discovering them? In addition to doing that, we look at the organic strategy and we say, okay, how consistent is this? What is going on? How regularly is it happening? How frequently is posting going on? On what platforms is that happening? And then we look to tie together strategies to extend the life of that content. So running, for example, a dollar a day traffic strategy on content that an artist is posting to make sure that the people that are coming into their world via ads or anywhere else are seeing the things that they post. Um, we run very simple, you know, green light warmth boosting, we call them style campaigns that can be run at a dollar or two a day. Those are the types of things where in addition to advising on that consistency that Ed was talking about and that kind of congruency in content, then taking it and giving it a little bit of extra life so that you don't have to rely on just, you know, the algorithms to give you the reach and the, you know, potential engagement that you might get from fans. That's another area where organic and, and paid traffic really overlap with one another. Like they're, again, like I think the whole kind of purpose of this two-part episode was to show like these are not mutually exclusive. In fact, like they work together and a dollar a day type of boosting campaign is a really good example of that. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I agree. And I hope that this has been a really, the last two episodes have been a really good way for you all to see that like anytime anybody's saying you should only do organic or you should only do paid, it's like, Oh, this is a good reference point to think back and think, well, no, not really. Like I, I maybe I want to steer more into one or the other right now, but like I should have both active and going in order to continue to grow my career and my relationship with my fans. There are two specific strategies and trainings that come to my mind that I think if you're wondering about organic content and how to take listeners that are coming into your world and really nurture them and connect with them is inside of Indie Pro, which we'll link to in the show notes, there's a training that's called how to turn listeners into fans. And if you think about that from a lot of what we've been talking about from the paid traffic front, it's taking these people who might've just had one discovery point or one exposure to you and how to formulate your content and your organic content strategy to pull them deeper into your world in a way that's actually meaningful. So that's part number one. Part number two is the dollar a day traffic strategy, which I just talked about a moment ago, how to lengthen the engagement and the impact that your organic content can then have so that you're not needing to rely on algorithms to help you reach your fans because the organic reach is continuing to go lower and lower and lower. So we'll link to Indie Pro in the show notes. So if you're not in the community, you can check it out. I think those two strategies are big ones to consider when kind of looking at the 30,000 foot view that we've talked about in these last two episodes. So I hope that you guys take something from this and also just take away very, very high level. I think just to sum up what we've talked about here is when it comes to paid traffic and organic traffic, what you can be focused on is when it comes to fan acquisition and getting in front of people for the first time, you let me know how you feel about this, Ed, but I would sum up that paid traffic is a really big opportunity to get in front of fans at scale at a predictable, affordable, and consistent fashion. And then organic is a big opportunity to continue to take the things that you learned from your paid advertising to not only show content to those fans and appear public and engaged and like you're actually, you know, really active in doing something, but also gives you the opportunity to tap into some of the algorithmic sort of organic growth that you can get on platforms like TikTok and Instagram Reels. I think those are kind of like the two legs of how you grow an audience online right now. 
I don't think you can have one without the other. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that that's very well said and hopefully very helpful for everybody going forward as you try to build your ecosystem and your fan base. This was super fun. I like these kind of like more philosophical discussions of of what we do and, and how we do it because it's easy to get stuck in the day to day. Like you and I do this all the time at the agency. We're working with artists and we're kind of diagnosing what's going on in their marketing and seeing what's happening. But it's cool to zoom out and really ask ourselves every once in a while why we're recommending the things that we are. <laughs> so this was cool. I hope you guys dug this. If you liked it, drop us a review. Let us know what you thought. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe. It really helps us to get all the things that we're teaching out to more indies that could benefit from it and use these strategies and tools to grow their fan base online. Thank you guys so much for listening. It was a blast to have you on this episode of Creative Juice. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace out, indies.